So how are you going to run faster into in 2020? You know, this is a new year. Uh, there's a, you know, it's a brand new start for all of us. And I just want to first and foremost say Happy New Year to all of you. Appreciate you you stopping to the, the Run, Dream, Achieve YouTube channel. Go into uh, RunDreamAchieve.com and, you know, taking the time to, to invest in your personal development. You know, it really says a lot about all of you. And uh, I really appreciate, um, you know, the time that you take out of your busy day to come and hear what I have to say. So, you know, I, I guess the reason why I, I was wanting to make this video is just, you know, because it's, it's, brand, it's a brand new year. It's a new start for all of us. And I want you to run faster this year. I want you to start using more leverage, training smarter, getting better results on less work. You know, you know the idea of <clears throat> that you have to you have to work hard to get results. Yes, I mean part of that is true. There's no way in the world you're going to break you know uh, an hour and thirty minutes for the half marathon or, or twenty five minutes for the five k, or run your first five k or run your first marathon without putting in some work. I mean there's no question about it. <clears throat> But that being said, you know, hard work in and of itself doesn't always guarantee us results. You know, uh, you know, I brought this up in, in some of the posts that I've written on the on the site. You know, the the average American, you know, 78% of the American population are living paycheck to paycheck. You know, and these are highly driven, focused, motivated, oftentimes highly educated men and women uh, that are barely making ends meet. You know, and it's not that they lack, you know, work ethic or they don't know how to work hard. You know, it's it's a lot of times we've been taught one specific way. And in most cases, and, and you know, this is the facts. I mean, most of us have been taught to rely on one source of income, you know, a paycheck. And, you know, you, you, you provide a service, you do something phenomenal for, for other people. And most people love their jobs. And, you know, and jobs are definitely a wonderful thing. Uh, but at the same time, when you have 15 or 20 bills and you have one source of income, you know, uh, you got a mortgage, you got student loans, you got credit cards, um, you have other miles to feed, to feed um, <clears throat> you know, your money goes quick. So you have to, um, you know, the fact that so many people are working hard, uh, oftentimes neglecting their health and their, their time with, with others uh, to meet spec at their place of employment, um, you know, sometimes the your health and takes a back seat. So, you know, working hard is um, is very important in athletics and in life. But at the same time, there's also working smart. You know, if you had a, a an axe or you had a um, chainsaw, which would be easier? Which tool would be easier for you to cut the tree down? You know, obviously, we know the answer to that. You know, a chainsaw is going to be much less, much less work. Um, you're going to get results much quicker because you're using a different tool uh, than than an axe. So, you know, I guess what I want to just kind of bring up in this in this video is just just to remind you to really work smart this year. Um, there there are other ways to get better results in this sport. Um, if you're running high mileage for, for mileage sake, just to say, you know, hey, I did 80 miles this week or I did 100 miles for the, the past six weeks um, and you go out and you race and you don't get the results that you want, uh, you have to change up what you're doing and you have to um, look at look at what you're, how you're setting up your training and, and make some changes. You know, for, for me personally, I got into that, that mode as well. Um, I got up to 142 miles a week thinking that higher mileage was going to get me a better marathon result and found out that, uh, after being told numerous times by, by elite coaches, uh, Nate, you know, the, yeah, go and go and experiment with higher mileage, see if that'll get you faster than, than 219. And, um, I had to learn my lesson. I, I got my best results on running lower mileage, but focusing on a higher, focusing on uh, training at a higher percentage of my weekly volume at or close to my race pace or far below my race pace. You know, for me, uh, running a marathon in two hours and 22 minutes was the goal. So I knew I needed, know I needed to hold 525 mile pace for, for 26.2 miles. So I was spending a lot of time at four minute mile pace for like shorter intervals, like 200s, 300s, 400s, 600s. Um, and then spending, you know, a lot of time doing like mile repeats at 440, 445. So as you see, it's, 
lots of time spent faster than goal marathon race pace on top of, you know, uh, training above marathon race pace, you know, um, so spending, you know, doing moderate runs at, at six minute pace, six twenty pace, things like that. Uh, you know, continue, continue to focus this year on just not losing enthusiasm uh, when you when you run into setbacks, we all get them. It doesn't matter if you're uh, an elite athlete or you're a total beginner. Um, even the best runners in the world uh, have do not finish uh, marathons or, or races, you know, DNFs as we call them. Um, but the thing I've noticed in all of the athletes I've trained with and, and some of the world class athletes that I've lived with, even, um, you know, they never lost enthusiasm for what they were doing. You know, it's a common trait I've seen on a lot of the Europeans and uh, Ethiopians and Kenyans that I've that I've trained with is, I mean, they'll have a poor race on this on, you know, they'll have a poor race. And on the same day, a, a few hours after the race, they're already talking about their next race. And it's like they've totally forgotten altogether uh, their poor, their, you know, poor performance. So, you know, we all have a choice between working smart and working hard. And there is, um, you know, I'm, I'm a product of it as well, that working hard um, is, is important, and it is important. But when you're working hard and you're not getting the results that you want, then that's the time where you have to start changing up your strategy. You know, um, it's like the saying, you know, you keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Uh, that's a lot of times true. You know, we... Um, as distance runners, you middle distance runners, you have to visualize and see yourself doing what you want to do months, years in advance before it ever happens. It, it's got to happen in your mind first. I mean, that is absolutely key. You've got to spend time, you know, and if anything, I want to share with you this today is just kind of to reiterate with you, see, spend time each day, whether it's like 10 minutes in the morning when you're first waking up and 10 minutes, you know, right when you're going to bed close your eyes, visualize yourself getting across the finish line or performing in a, in a, in a race and seeing, you know, maybe one of your competitors throwing a surge on you and you reacting and being able to make a move and be able to not only make that move, but to sustain that pace that you're running. See yourself doing what you really, really want to do. And before it becomes a reality, I mean, I know this works because that's exactly what I did. You know, I, when I was with the, when I was a conditional athlete with the uh, Army World Class Athlete Program, I was on conditional status when I got to the unit. I was a 51-minute, 10-mile runner. I had qualified for for one World Armed Forces uh, Cross Country Championships, and that's really all I had at, at a 2:43 marathon uh, debut uh, from two, the 2002 New York City Marathon, and I didn't really belong in that that uh, that unit. I mean, these were athletes. These were some, Superior athletes that already had at a bare minimum an Olympic trial standard in, in an Olympic sport. So <clears throat> I had to make that decision to step up my game. I mean, when it came to racing, uh, you know, I had a one I had one year to train full time and to you know make the changes I had to make in order to you know earn an Olympic trial standard and. You know, there was nobody holding my hand. There was, you know, nobody was, you know, nobody just handed me a 219 marathon. Um, but I, I really focused in on that mental training aspect. I, I saw myself. I believed in what I was doing. I was certain that I was going to run under two hours and 22 minutes uh, before I left that unit. And because somebody believed in me enough when I was on conditional status to say, hey, this guy's got potential. He doesn't have the standard yet. Um, he's made some mistakes in the marathon. He hasn't got that marathon time down yet, but we're going to give him a shot. And, you know, so that, that, that is very, very key, uh, for you in this new year to see yourself doing something that maybe you don't even think is you're, you're capable of doing right now. You know, I wasn't certain really either that I could go from 243 to 222 or 221.59, which is what I really needed. Um, massive, massive jump in pace. Um, and, but I, I was just certain I knew that I could do it. You know, I had shown potential in other races. I just had to get the marathon right. So with you, if there's something that's holding you back, uh, whether it's something mental or, 
you have something in your life that's that's uh, you know causing you to to stress out about you know either thinking that you're you're past uh, peak ages or you or you may don't you maybe you don't think that you have what it takes um, or it's something that's causing you to to not perform at the level that you're uh, that you believe you can perform at. I, I just want to encourage you to stay persistent, consistent in this new year. You know, visit RunDreamAchieve.com. Go in through all the, the blog posts that I've written on that site. Um, there's going to be something in there that's going to keep you, that's going to like, you know, hey, there's that that makes sense. I, I haven't tried that before. Um, I'm going to definitely consider what, what he's uh, suggesting here. You know, watch the YouTube videos. You know, I just, I, this YouTube channel is rel relatively new. I just, you know, it's Jan January 2020. I can't believe it. I started this channel in January of 2019. So 12 months, just like that. So, um, you know, take the time to, to go back and watch some of these videos. Or if you want to uh, invest in your personal development, there's running courses on RunTreeMachieve.com. Uh, yes, it is an investment, but I'm a huge a huge believer in personal development. You have to be willing to invest in yourself uh, to bypass the mistakes of other people and learn from those mistakes so that you don't have to experience that. You know, uh, you know, there's training programs on RunDreamAchieve.com. Click on training programs in, in the menu and there's specific training schedules that I've created on that site that you can follow. They're easy. They're, they come in PowerPoint presentation uh, format. They're already built for you. It's either a 12, you know, four up to 16 week training programs for total beginners. Um, there's training programs for athletes trying to break an hour and 50 minutes for the for the half marathon, 145, 130, 120. Um, you know, and I'm now currently working on a program, uh, a course for marathoners that are trying to break two hours and 30 minutes. So I'll leave uh, the links to the training programs, the courses, and the new course as well. And I definitely want to just, you know, really encourage you to stay focused. And this is going to be a great year for you. I'm excited to uh, to hear how you guys are doing in 2020. You know, take the time. Just just drop me a line on any of the videos. I, I always respond uh, to either questions or comments. Um, you know, leave a thumbs up. Leave, you know, if, if there's something in these videos that you don't agree with, uh, you know, leave a comment, you know, or, or Thumb me down, whatever, you know, I, I appreciate constructive feedback as well. Um, I'm not the be all end all of um, uh, mentors out there. There's plenty of people that you can go to, but I have been around. I have been competing for 28 years and I've had um, I've had my share of, of failures and successes in our sport. And I understand what athletes that are that don't have much talent, uh, but are trying to get to that next level. I understand that because I didn't have much talent either and I had to really rely on my work ethic. So it's really important that in this new year, you know, change up your mentality, start, start changing up how you set up your training, um, invest in your personal development. You know, all, all the great people that I've been around surrounded myself around are very, very big into personal development and focusing on, you know, not only investing in themselves, but find surrounding themselves with other people that know more, you know, more than they do and have done what they want to do. So uh, I wish you a very, very happy 2020. Uh, like I said, I really appreciate you, you guys coming to the videos and visiting RunGMAchieve.com. I'm continuing to work to make this, uh, to make the brand better and to most importantly provide value and provide uh, information and strategies and tactics that you can use in your upcoming races to really, really, you know, bypass what you think you're you're currently capable of doing. You know, that's the great thing about our sport, just getting out there and competing and, you know, being around those people that are really fired up and motivated to to not only race well, but to get a good result and to be healthy. Um, you know, you're, you're surrounding yourself with, with great people that are going to push you to that next level. So, uh, with that, Happy New Year. And again, thanks so much for, for being a part of this channel. And uh, I'll talk to you in the next video.